dear <coughs> colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> good morning. Uh, I have a paper which I try to present in a short period of half an hour, but uh, it's something <coughs> uh, to an 58 pages, and if I <coughs> spend even one minute in each page, it will take more than one hour. This case, like, and uh, so I have to <coughs> squeeze and uh, give as less time to each uh, pa page. And if there is, <coughs> I'm, I'm sure there will be questions and different ideas that I have uh, from the maybe previous presentation. And then if there is then the time, <coughs> we can discuss it maybe in this afternoon or so. However, I start, I don't know how to operate this one. Oh, I, okay. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, actually, it has f five sections, which goes from introduction to consular period, uh, Pahlavi first and Pahlavi second, Reza Shah and Mohammed Reza Shah Pahlavi, and then Islamic Republic. This one? Oh, the other side, okay. Uh, Which one? This one. Oh, the right, right, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I just read a sm small part of that uh, because it's, uh, it will take time. But I need to know and to present what we mean by modern period of uh, Iran. Those who have studied the social and historical problems of Iran have different ideas about the beginning point of modern period of Iran. Some refer to Nasser, Nasseri period of Qajar dynasty in mid 19th century. Some others refer to constitutional revolution <coughs> period by the end of 19th century and some consider Pahlavi dynasty as the beginning of the modern period of Iran and its gradual shift from traditional architecture, uh, architectural design to modern practice. Uh, well, with this outlook and in order to find out its roots and better understanding of academic and professional architectural practice in Iran, including its gradual shift from traditional to modern society, we should return to a period of Nasseri or Nasseri Shah Qajar and his prominent chancellor Amir Kabir when the new lifestyle and the kind of modern community begins in Iran, which also prepares the ground for the constitutional movement in later date and altogether it represents the beginning of modernity in Iran. Therefore, the social and philosophy, oh, sorry, I have to, no. Therefore, the social and philosophical basis of contemporary architecture of Iran is related to socio-political development of Qajar period and the constitutional revolution. But its physical consequences in buildings and architecture flourished at the beginning of Pahlavi dynasty in early 20th century. 
including the establishment of Tehran University in 1934 and its School of Fine Arts where they, they were teaching or architecture <coughs> uh, in 1940. Based on Bozar system of France, where our architecture was taught by French architects, for, followed by Bozar, Bozar educated Iranian architects. Uh, this paper presents the four distinct I'm skipping some part of the written, written part of that. Uh, this paper presents the four distinct period of uh, Iranian contemporary architecture as this described uh, before. Uh, am I right? Qajar period, uh, the Industrial Revolution of Europe in 19th century, which was the main element of change in architecture and urban planning, and the basis for modern architecture, coincides with the rule of Qajar dynasty. Uh, then we have uh, the Qajar period and the, the rule of uh, Nasreddin Shah from 18. 48 to 1896, and his uh, prominent uh, chancellor, Mirza uh, Tariq uh, Amir Kabir, which started a series of basic reforms in education and teaching, also establishing the first higher education institute called Darul Funun or Polytechnic. He also encouraged the king to visit Europe. And then uh, when the king's uh, visit, uh, at that time, uh, the whole Europe, especially Paris and London, were going to, to change the, uh, it was during the Industrial Revolution and new products, great exhibitions, etc. cetera, et cetera. These are the things that has uh, influenced the, uh, these are the parts I'm just uh, skipping, but the, however, Nasser Eddin Shah, uh, during his visit, uh, fell in love with uh, the lifestyle and buildings in, in Europe and remembered his own city with the winding street, etc. But when he returned to uh, Iran, uh, he actually uh, tried to imitate, the, to, to do uh, everything that uh, he has seen there, including the dress change and uh, uh, everything from, uh, uh, the, um, he actually destroyed the, the old uh, city wall and uh, uh, made a, a new one with the wide streets and uh, uh, all uh, squares and uh, straight uh, streets, boulevards, etc. Uh, so he, uh, we can say that he, okay. Uh, th this was the, the first uh, uh, plan where uh, we can see the I cannot show. However, the the palace is in the center. I cannot show the. Anyway, the, the there is a bazaar and the palace, and then the rest are the uh, the um, living areas, the residential areas. This is the uh, the city wall that was demolished by uh, during the. Uh, Nasreddin Shah and he uh, actually built a, a, a new, uh, th th these were also destroyed at that time. They were the four uh, gates and uh, as you see the, the architecture is also a, a traditional style. The, the, this was also before 
Nasreddin Shah was Fat Ali Shah, the first bazaar in, uh, is it the first new mosque near the bazaar, uh, bazaar of Tehran, with the four haywans, that's the typical. And so the uh, partial views of bazaar in Tehran and Tabriz, and these are the, the very beginning of the, the, the uh, modern period. This is the city wall, the new city wall by Nasreddin Shah. And as you see, the, there are the, uh, the straight uh, streets, and the, the, old, the old one is right in the, the middle. And these are the biggest square, as I think it was partly shown also by, uh, I think it was shown before. And uh, uh, the, uh, the architectural still is uh, still somewhere between traditional and the modern one. A, a new mosque was also built again with four A1s. And the uh, palace, Golestan Palace, which uh, they introduced the new elements, especially the double columns and the new. These are something that also was brought from uh, Shiraz Palace and then uh, was put together at that time of the Qajar period. And uh, they also somehow beginning of the, uh, or the uh, latest part of the traditional. And this one, especially uh, when uh, Nasser Din Shah has visited uh, Paris, uh, uh, the Opera House in Paris, and he tried to imitate, uh, actually the, the steel uh, technology was not yet uh, very well introduced, but they started to shoot, uh, as you say, can see on the, the right side, uh, uh, there are some arches by, you know, steel, steel frame arches, and it's uh, actually demolished now, but uh, that was, a beginning of the use of the a new material as a, a steel structure. And Shams was, uh, uh, th this one still is existing, and this was uh, just the, the, the tallest building at that time, uh, administrative, and also Darul Funun, which I mentioned before, is uh, the, during the Nasiri period and uh, Amir, Amir Kabir. And you can see the, uh, the still the influence of some uh, European type of, of columns being used there and the uh, actually the start of uh, modernism. And the uh, there are some uh, big houses that are really very interesting from the volumetric point of view and very, very artistic. And these are not uh, uh, very old, actually. It is also in the period of Qajar, which has started. Uh, and now it is also uh, being very famous because of the work they did on the top of the house, which uh, helps very much for cooling system. And uh, these are the, the very interesting houses in Kashan, is in central Iran. And uh, this one is uh, especially very interesting. If you want an, a real example of zero energy, you should go to this uh, sunken courtyard. And then the offices there, uh, they are cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So a real good examples of zero energy while it is also very well uh, designed and proportionate. And I encourage you, if you go to Iran, try to visit this building. It's, 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 it's called uh, Agha Bozurgi School, Mosque and School. Uh, then we go to Pahlavi period, the, uh, the Reza Shah period. Uh, which is by the end of the 
World War I, the Qajar dynasty was ended. Am I right in that one? Yeah. Uh, with a coup d'etat in 1920 and Reza Shah formed the Pahlavi government. In two decades, from 1921 to 41, the Iranian architecture practice and education took a drastic new direction. But again, it was influenced by architectural movements in Europe. Uh, many new buildings were erected in Tehran in direct relation to change of administrative and educational structure, structure <coughs> such as municipality, ministry of finance, ministry of justice, <coughs> etc. <cetera. coughs> I should mention that before that, in Qajar period, we had one like a, a governor uh, that uh, he represented all kind of, you know, it was like Minister of Finance, he was, uh, he, he was uh, everything. <laughs> uh, mayor, uh, or, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, all the money was going there and in his office and he was the, the ruler. The, but at this time, uh, we had a, a, uh, a change in government organization and there were ministries arranged at that time, which was not existing before. So for those, they need to have new buildings too. And in these buildings, we can see the uh, changes in, in architecture. Uh, these are the, uh, the new building material and technology were used in the public buildings, such as railway station, we didn't have a railway station, administrative and university buildings and royal palaces. They all used the new uh, building materials. But uh, I am not going to uh, these uh, different areas. Uh, I can show some of them in the picture and maybe later on you can see, you can read the whole uh, text uh, when it is printed. Uh, however, there were uh, six types of uh, styles and uh, different types of buildings, which is interesting to be. be. Uh, Reza Shah has uh, demolished the, the walls, and in, in lieu the, of the walls, he, he put the boulevards, and uh, he, he actually uh, didn't need to, to do it, didn't need to have the wall because of the expansion of the city and the uh, military installations that he could put around the city the, the, in different part of uh, the city to, to control. Uh, then we have uh, the, sorry. Uh, some buildings, uh, even during the Reza Shah, was uh, still influenced by the, uh, the older architecture, uh, like these two houses, uh, some new elements there, but then uh, the new ones, uh, uh, especially the one with Gabriel Geberkian, uh, who was also a, a good friend of Le Corbusier, he made uh, almost a, a Corbusier type of villa here is a very interesting villa which exists in, in Tehran. And uh, uh, the, this one by uh, the Armenian uh, architects who came to Iran and built several. Uh, this is the Ovanesian, uh, which uh, is mostly like a, a, a German expressionist. Uh, type of uh, building, but uh, these are actually going to the uh, early, early modernism of, of Iran. And uh, uh, this is a very clever uh, design of the, a, a sharp corner, uh, again by Ovanesian, these are uh, good examples of the uh, 
the Iranian early modern architecture. Uh, the museum, this, uh, uh, as mentioned by Dorish before, uh, is influenced by the, I mean, somehow from the Sassanid arch which was used before. But in, in details, there are some good details, especially working with, uh, uh, with brick. If you go to and see these, uh, these columns which are by, by brick, uh, it's very, very clever. And the whole uh, building is also, uh, I, I believe, is, a, is an interesting building. Uh, the, uh, Andre Godard uh, has this in, uh, built in this uh, school on the, in Yazd on the right side, and the uh, Hafez uh, Mausoleum in Shiraz, which uh, uh, Furugi has helped him. And I have to, uh, to mention this uh, to, to you that uh, I'm not shaving all that. Uh, uh, which my dear friend Darius that uh, uh, Faruqi was very influential, it's true, but like many other influential architects, uh, uh, he, he was either collaborating with some architects or, as I had the opportunity to work under him, I was his assistant then, I, uh, his atelier, Fourouri, uh, became atelier to some when he resigned. And uh, uh, he was a good professor. He was a good teacher. He was also a good designer. He didn't design directly by sitting. And, but I noticed that when we were working on the Senate building, which I'll show you this is, uh, very soon, uh, he, he was coming to the office looking at the plans, he was giving some suggestion, very, very interesting. And this is where we learned. The architect is not, the architect is not uh, the one who has, but he, he was doing also the sketches, he was doing, it's not that, he, he didn't know this the sketch, he was doing that. But he was also a state man, he was a, very important personality that was engaged in uh, architectural planning activities, teaching activities. And uh, then, uh, actually, his office was together with Mr. Furuki. They were t working together. OK. Uh, Nikolai Markov, uh, a Russian who became Persian, and uh, this is the School of Alborz, uh, and the other buildings, which at that time, so these are all the period of Reza Shah. Uh, very interesting is the Gabriel Geberkian, is a very excellent example of the early modern architecture in Iran. In Tehran, we have this, I think, that's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and this is one of the best early modern architecture that we have in Iran. The other parts are those uh, which has uh, in the other styles that they, they used, uh, Akhamenidian columns and things like that, in, uh, like police department building, etc. cetera. Uh, uh, the, uh, th this one is also the uh, a work of Geberkian together with Ma Marcel Dubrul, one of the professors that uh, Andre Godard brought for to School of Fine Arts. And uh, this is the atrium, the multi-story atrium, which is very uh, interesting and is a good example of the early modern architecture too. Uh, and this is uh, an eclectic time of, of uh, building that we have in uh, a famous square in, in Hassanabad in, in, in uh, Iran. It's eclectic because all kind of uh, uh, 
type of architecture is, is used there. Uh, and then we have, uh, these are the, some buildings which built by Germans and some palaces. Uh, I'm going a little bit faster because I need to focus a little bit on, more on our present architecture. Well, this is after the World War II and the occupation of Iran uh, by Allied forces and exile of Reza Shah, a period of stagnation appears in urban development and building affairs of Iran. But few years after the monar monarchic rule of Mohammad Reza Shah, which lasted for 37 years uh, until the Islamic Revolution, the urban development buildings, construction, and academic activities restarted with greater influence of American and European <coughs> models. Uh, well, during uh, this period of 37 years, European-American architectural styles has grown from early modernism to high modernism, and then we wit witnessed the fall of modernism and direction change after the 1960s, and the beginning of postmodernism in architecture. It is interesting to notice that all these Western architectural developments and changes were completely reflected uh, in uh, Iran. Uh, at that time, Andre Godard, uh, well, the school, the official academic education started in 1940 for the architecture, and Andre Godard was the first uh, dean of the uh, fine arts and was replaced by Mohsen Furugui, uh, and the French architects also were replaced by. Iranian architects, young architects like uh, Seyhun and Kiyoyi, both educated in Paris, uh, uh, Bazaar Paris. Uh, well, from uh, middle of 1960s, uh, decade and after, then several changes uh, occurring in, in planning and architecture in Iran and uh, we had several uh, visit, uh, visits, uh, visits also from uh, major architects. Uh, but generally speaking, in this period of 37 years, Iran had experienced collection of European-American architectural styles from the early modernism to the uh, culmination of modernism and the fall of modernism to the rise of postmodernism. We also witness many different type of architectural design. Uh, well, I, I'm going to to show you more. I'm afraid uh, it's too too much, and uh, I must go a little bit fast. Uh, these are the two uh, uh, elements which were shown before by by Sehun, uh, the, the uh, you know, one is in Mashhad and one is in Hamidan. They are uh, like the, the monumental type of the uh, uh, architecture. Uh, the use of the uh, concrete and the, uh, the one for in Mashhad is a very uh, impressive one. The, the uh, sculpture is from also a famous uh, sculptor in, in the School of Fine Arts and is a, a very uh, famous for the few sculptures that uh, he still has in, in Iran. But uh, uh, these are the, the monuments that uh, uh, made Sehun famous for uh, being actually uh, I, I do not share all, all the, his works as the masterpieces, but these two are well, the best, and they are different type. You know, the, uh, this one shows the, uh, 
the, the type of Nader himself, very giant uh, Jew, uh, very, uh, what you call, very, uh, uh, what you call, warrior. warrior. <laughs> Uh, but but the, uh, uh, the in, the, it's different in this one, and I don't have the, the, the example of Neishabu, uh, uh, which was shown before, but that's, that's a more, more romantic type. It's, it's more related to the type of the, the, those, this, these three are of the best of his examples. Uh, then uh, we have, this building, at this time I was uh, a student uh, and I was working. Actually, this on the right side is, is my, my, own, my own drawings. We had to, to do it. There was no, no uh, computer and we had to draw all that by, by hand. Uh, and this is Furugi and Khiyai, they built it to together and uh, Andre Bloch uh, was also uh, visiting Iran and discussing it. And uh, I think this is a, a good example of the, the higher modern example of uh, architecture in, in Iran by Qiyayi and Fulubi. Uh, it was done in Qiyayi uh, office in front of uh, Tehran University and Fulubi was visiting uh, every week, once or twice, and give uh, ideas and uh, uh, make what we call correction or correction or uh, consulting and that. Uh, then uh, these are the, uh, be at the beginning of the high-rise building. At the left side is by Hushang Khan Shagawi who said uh, he, he made also the elevator, but by himself, because at that time we didn't have yet the elevator in, in Iran. And the right side is uh, uh, Farman Farmayan, the, the first uh, terminal building of Mehrabad Airport uh, in, in Iran. Uh, but one of his best uh, example of architecture, I think, is uh, Azadi Sport Complex in Tehran. Uh, we made, uh, it, it was also appreciated with all architects who visited later on. And the stadium is a, is a very, very uh, fine design. And uh, it's not uh, just uh, what I'm saying, but we had uh, German experts who built uh, several important uh, stadiums around the world, including JG and JPG, well, I forgot the ger his ger German name. His, uh, anyway, uh, they visited Tehran and they really appreciated what they, they, they have done the stadium in Berlin. They, they, covered, they covered part of that and many stadiums around the world. And they really gave a, a good lecture on the stadium, the, uh, that the, the way it was organized and built. And the, the, on the right side, the down, is the, uh, the swimming pool, the covered swimming pool, is a, absolutely a very modern type of uh, building, very clear, simple, and uh, modern style of, of that period. And this is, I think, has been uh, talking enough about that. And uh, uh, Amanat won this building when he was 20, 24 years old. He was uh, still a student, and he uh, won this in a competition. And now it is becoming a, a, a famous uh, monument in, in, in Tehran. Then we have the other good architects like Comran Diva, who did the uh, uh, modern museum of art in, in Tehran. Very uh, interesting in the uh, design of the uh, a modern museum, and also the, the type of the 
uh, lighting for the interior was very in inspired from the, uh, the, the stairs uh, in the old building when they finished on the roof. And the lighting is a very nice interior lighting in, in this building. Uh, uh, this was, these are the, also the, the, the detail and the lighting is, is fabulous. It's very good in this one building. This was also shown by Sardar Afghami. Uh, and uh, he, he has done very uh, small part of his work. He's, uh, he's living in Paris now, but this was one of his first uh, important city theater in Tehran. Uh, the high-rise building, uh, the, what is called ASP, residential building in Tehran. I'm actually living in the 14th floor of, of the, the second one. There are th three of them. The two of them are shown here. Very typical of that, that type of uh, uh, modern architecture. And the right side are also by Farman Farmayan uh, office, their towers. Uh, and uh, uh, Comran Dibo has also uh, has made this, what we call Shushtareno, is a, a new town in the Khuzestan. Uh, it's a very interesting type of uh, residential quarter. Unfortunately, during the water, the, the, the war between Iran and Iraq, Iraq it was uh, damaged uh, uh, very much, but it's uh, still uh, a very good example that he used the, the traditional uh, uh, architecture of Iran. Uh, also, the Farman Farmayan, who had uh, uh, designed many buildings, that uh, one of his major architects was uh, Nader Ardalan, uh, who was working on the the, the left side on this, uh, the first very good example of the, the prefab, prefab concrete was introduced in this building. And the, the most important one is the right side, which was uh, is a management study center of Harvard University, which is now as uh, Imam Sadr uh, University in Tehran. Uh, he was uh, studying actually the uh, Fien uh, Garden, uh, Bauer Fien. So, the time? Well, uh, okay. Uh, the, as you see, the, like the Fien Garden, there is a library in the middle as a main kushk in the middle, and the buildings are uh, surrounding it. Okay, we come to the, the last part. Uh, I hope I can make it in. Uh, uh, in 1978, the Islamic Revolution became victorious. Uh, uh, everything was uh, uh, slowed down uh, because of the eight years war with Iraq. And then uh, uh, after eight years, uh, there was lo lots of changes in uh, uh, the, uh, the city, uh, the architecture, uh, the, uh, the uh, academic, academic, etc. Uh, okay, the, what, uh, maybe I can just read this part. Uh, what could be, be considered as more positive aspects from the pre-revolution era is the increase of translation, editing, publishing. There are more, more books and publishing right now than it, it was before, and 
also organizing the architectural competitions. There are many competitions taking place, preparing them and implementing some revitalization project, etc. And uh, finally, there are some uh, architects I would like to show their work. Uh, uh, like uh, Sheikh Zainuddin, who designed uh, on the left side, is he, he did that embassy in uh, Tehran. Uh, and uh, this is more like postmodern type of architecture in Hafez Yeges house and the, the other one, you can say some influence of uh, high tech in, in, in his work. This was shown before also the, the Milat telecommunication tower. And this is the new building, which is now uh, uh, so almost full now. And it's uh, again with uh, the same CETEC company, French company, who built the ASP building. And this is 54 story uh, building. Uh, and uh, this was, uh, th these are all the, the left side is a project by the late uh, architect Behruz Ahmadi. Uh, is a type of more uh, postmodern post type of the combination of two st styles of the building. And the right side is from Reza Danishmur, Danishmir, uh, who uh, he worked also with me for two years in, in an office. And he's, he's a very clever guy. And now he's, he's working with his wife, and they have uh, several uh, buildings. Uh, I never learn, I think, with this. <laughs> OK, this is by uh, Mir Miran, uh, who was uh, my student. He was uh, in Atelier to some the whole time. And then he, we were also uh, good collaborators. And we worked together uh, in his office. And uh, there are three types of the buildings that you can see from uh, Rafsanjan Sports Center to two embassies, one in Frankfurt, Germany, and one in, Tha in uh, Thailand. Uh, but they are, uh, maybe if the, you are interested, then we can discuss it later on, uh, or if you have a chance to talk. Uh, the embassy of Iran, in, this is by Dorobdi, another uh, architect, Syrian architect, in, in uh, another embassy in, in Berlin. And uh, these are the two works of uh, a, a very good Iranian uh, architect, Farhad Ahmadi. Uh, he was also one of my brilliant uh, students. Uh, this, this work is in Korea, and uh, uh, this is actually the uh, one of i think his best example of work and thank you very much thank you.